We are ready to start. Our next speaker is called Guillaume, so please welcome him. And so, hi, I'm uh, here to uh, present you a GTK RS. Uh, it won't be a technical uh, speak at all, so if you have technical questions, we can speak after the talk. So, GTK RS, uh, how to make uh, unsafe safe. So first, uh, what is GTK? So it's a GNOME uh, UI library that we use uh, in the Linux uh, environments. So cross-platform, it works as well uh, on the Mac and uh, as far as I know, it works as well on Windows. So, fine. so a bit of history. Uh, at first, it was started by uh, Dermary Letang in uh, 2015. It was uh, when we were both of us, uh, of us uh, in, uh, still uh, at school. We started it uh, to learn uh, Rust. So first it was called LGTK, and uh, we have uh, sub-crates uh, for each GNOME library, like uh, GIO, JLib, and stuff. It was all in the same repository, at the opposite of uh, currently. So uh, the first implementation was very simple. It was a uh, one-to-one -one binding. So you had uh, a function, an object. It was uh, the same uh, in Rust, so not much advantages. Uh, but you could use a GTK in REST. So now the cons. So yeah, it was at the time very slow to compile. We were in a, still in 2015. It wasn't that we had a huge macro to generate uh, all signals. Uh, wasn't uh, very very efficient. So uh, as so since it was bound by hand, a lot of uh, typo human errors uh, were there, casting uh, errors. Yeah, just like I said, it was just a wrapper around the uh, C code, uh, just one-to-one, -one, not, not much safety. Uh, and at the time, the compiler was uh, getting uh, updated and uh, having uh, breaking changes like every two or three days. So changing the uh, thousands of lines at once was quite long for a, a library uh, this big. So that's, I think it was at the start of 2016. We had a new contributor. We brought uh, the Gear support. So Gear is a format uh, which is used by the GNOME libraries to describe your uh, API and uh, is used uh, by uh, other languages to generate uh, their own binding. And that's what uh, we did in REST uh, with uh, a whole new uh, crate, Gear, which uh, generates uh, all the code. So that's the first thing we did. We also rewrote uh, all uh, the glib uh, uh, how to explain. The glib is uh, the base, and uh, we had to rewrite it in order to make it uh, work uh, to build upon it. That's it. So, and so we did that. We, ha we could uh, bring a whole new uh, trait uh, system. So now you can say if, a tra if an object inherits from another. Very helpful. It does, uh, prevents uh, from uh, casting from a type to another. So that's it. And another thing uh, which I think it's still a, a bit of a debate, but uh, we uh, uh, decided to split uh, libraries uh, into their own uh, repository. So now glib isn't in GTK repository anymore. It's uh, the same organization, but not the same repository, which has its uh, issues for uh, every release. That's a debate. So the new trader system is basically based on uh, this one, is L. So now, when you have a function, for example, uh, for the widget, you take uh, is a widget. So every uh, object uh, which uh, implements this trait can use, uh, be used uh, in this function. So now, why is it better to use GTK RS uh, over GTK directly? For a few things. So, like uh, it's written, let's start with uh, compile errors, uh, type conversions. So in C, you can totally do that. It's not a problem, not much uh, checks. Uh, in Rust, uh, you will do it with, uh, by using the upcast method. The big difference being, uh, well, at this point, there isn't much. It's uh, just in Rust, uh, we have uh, checks uh, done at compile time. So here, if you try to make uh, an invalid cast, it will just uh, set fault uh, when you run it. So it's inconvenient to discover there is uh, an error uh, in your code after being compiled when distributed. And in REST, if you try the same, 
casting a type which uh, isn't a children of a window. For example, a button is a children of a widget, but isn't a children of a window. If you try it, you won't compile. You will get an error. So the trait isn't implemented for a GTK button. It's quite convenient. So uh, yeah, another advantage, of course, is uh, the code readability. So in C, uh, very verbose. In Rust, a bit less. It's the advantage of uh, object-oriented languages. Much better to, to say in here. So uh, some other gains. So there are quite a lot brought by Rust directly. Automatic refactoring and memory management brought by the Rust compiler directly. The sync and send rate bounds, which are used for signals, for example. So like that, you're sure your object won't be destroyed and called while being de uh, after being destroyed. Makes sense. And uh, we enforce at uh, when we generate the API that if you want a string or a pass, which is very convenient when you have to uh, to open a file or to specify a title to be sure you won't uh, try to do something strange at best. So, like I said uh, above, uh, everything related to closure, so signals, uh, callbacks, uh, everything. So yeah, some other gains, of course. Uh, now you can't have uh, arrays uh, which have invalid size. You can't give, uh, we don't allow to give a, a size of an array when you give it to a function. It's uh, done. Uh, an array is a five pointer, so you have uh, its length uh, provided by the type uh, directly. So no need to uh, give the size anymore. Very convenient and uh, allow to uh, have a lot less uh, errors. And of course, the strong type system, which is uh, one of the biggest advantage uh, of Rust. So you can't make a cast uh, well, however you want, just what the function needs. So now at this point, what remains to be done? Well, I think we are around 90% of uh, bindings automatically are generated. And uh, most of the uh, missing functionalities, functions, objects uh, are clearly uh, in GIO. So I'm starting to write uh, new things uh, in it directly. We'll see uh, how much time it takes, hopefully uh, a few months, I don't know yet. Uh, we started uh, recently at the last uh, Gnome Rust uh, Hackfest uh, to improve uh, the asynchronous support which is uh, very asked uh, by a few people, so it's coming. And of course, uh, from now, uh, the documentation is uh, generated uh, at the same time as the uh, API. So we directly have a C documentation, not a uh, Rust one. So examples are in C, uh, a, few, a lot of things uh, aren't uh, perfect. Uh, we have still a lot of work uh, to do in there. So it will be uh, the next step, I think, uh, once we are done with the bindings. So beyond the GTK IRS. So we had uh, a few uh, people from the GNOME community uh, very interesting uh, in Rust. Uh, we started a few ACFEST uh, last year uh, about this uh, to write the GNOME class uh, project, for example. Uh, we, uh, the previous talker is uh, from GNOME and, uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, there is uh, Federico, a big uh, guy in uh, GNOME, which is rewriting uh, a library, libRSVG, in Rust directly. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, because of him we started the uh, yeah, thing. Yeah, it was for this. Uh, and of course, yeah, we have other GNOME uh, libraries uh, which uh, start to have a binding, so JustRemer from, uh, I don't know where he is, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a WebKit uh, to GTK uh, and the source view and uh, a lot more, so. As long as it has a gear file, basically, you can generate it by automatically. I don't know how it goes for GStreamer. I think it's mostly uh, wrote by hand. So now uh, we have achieved uh, a good level, I think, at this point. Uh, we don't miss much. Uh, we are on little details now, having a deprecation, uh, having more dogs, having a better interface, better errors. And uh, at this point, how we could we uh, do uh, to make it uh, even better? And Realm uh, has been uh, created uh, for that. Uh, it's uh, another abstraction level, so I will let uh, its creator speak for it. So I give you the mic.
So, uh, as Guillaume said, Realm is an abstraction over GTKRS, which provides a more idiomatic way uh, to create desktop application in Rust, and it is based on GTKRS, and it also provides some support for asynchronous uh, programming. So first I'll cover uh, some pain points I had uh, when working with GTKRS uh, by developing a web browser. So uh, the first uh, problem I had is when you want to uh, associate some data with a widget, uh, let's say the model of your application, uh, when you want to do that uh, with GTKRS, uh, because of the safety we had in Rust, uh, we need to use an RC ref cell. So we have a ref content value that we want to uh, check the uh, be able to borrow, uh, check the borrow at runtime. So we need to use this boilerplate code with borrow mat and borrow uh, when we want to uh, update the model in a signal, which is something we want to do uh, somewhat frequently in GUI applications. So that's not very ergonomic. It's error prone because we only get the error at runtime instead of at compile time. So uh, one thing I wanted to tell you is that if you can avoid using RefSol, uh, it's, a good, it's a good thing to avoid. And what I do in Realm is that I, I use a RefSol, but I'm just not telling you. <laughs> so, uh, also, you can do asynchronous programming with uh, Glib and stuff, but it's not very uh, ergonomic. And I wanted to integrate Realm with the asynchronous I.O. library in Rust, which is Tokyo. And also, uh, since Rust does not provide inheritance, uh, you cannot do, for instance, like in Vala, declare a new class deriving from an existing widget to be able to use uh, this new widget like any other widgets. So that's not possible in Rust. Uh, so I wanted to, uh, with Realm, be able to uh, declare new widgets that could be used the same way as the GTK widgets. So. Realm is inspired by a language that is called M that is used for developing client-side applications. So Elm is an alternative to JavaScript. I found out it provides a good way uh, to uh, do model view controller. So that's my main ins inspiration for Realm. So in Elm, you will declare a model, which is the data that you associate with a view. And you have an update function that would take the model in response to some event and return the new model. And you also have a view function that describes uh, your view in a declarative way. Uh, in Realm, I used that, but I adapted it to Rust. So uh, for instance, update and view are now method of a widget trait. And we use mutation when it's uh, convenient. For instance, the update method uh, will take self by reference so that we can uh, mutate the model instead of having to return a new model. So let's see how we can use uh, Realm. First, we need to declare a model, which is a normal type in Rust, so it could be a struct. Uh, and then we use this widget attribute on an ample of, of widget, which is the trait we want to implement, and for a window in this case, which will create a window. So we need first the me model method, which declare the initial model of your widget. And then we have messages that are used to communicate, for instance, between widgets or uh, having a message chain when there's a GTK event. And it can also be used uh, when there's a synchronous I.O. So for instance, you do a network request, and when it's done, you receive a message. So we use the derived, well, the custom derived message. And we have an enum, which has many variants that can have a value. And then we have the view. So it's still in the impulse widget. And we use the view macro. And we now have the, uh, this declarative syntax. So we can create uh, GTK widgets and nest them, and also set their properties. Uh, we can connect the click event, for instance, which will send a, the increment message in this case. And we can also do bindings, meaning that uh, at the last line, we have the text property. The, of, the, uh, of the label that is bound to an attribute of the model. So that means that whenever this attribute of the model is changed, that will update uh, the view. And then we have this update method. So it takes self by mutable reference, which has access to the model that we can modify uh, when we receive a message. So in this case, when we receive the decrement message, we just change the counter um, attribute of the model. And that will actually update the view, even though it's not shown here. 
So how does all of that work? So the widget attribute will start by collecting the data binding. So it will analyze the view, check that in this case the label has a property that is called text that is bound to uh, the counter attribute of the model. And then it will actually change the code you write, you wrote in the med update method to uh, actually update the view. So it will see here that the counter attribute uh, was changed and it will use this value to update the view because it uh, notice that there was a bending in the view. So uh, even though uh, I use uh, attributes, RAM can work on stable ROS because I use a, a, a hack to have the, the uh, procedural macro to work. And uh, the future of RAM will uh, may be uh, without futures. Uh, also, I will work to improve the error messages uh, because at the time I first started RAM, uh, it was using uh, the old syn crate, so we didn't have access to the position of the token, so that's why when you have an error message, it's shown on the uh, widget attribute, which is not convenient. And I will uh, support more GDK features. So do you have any questions? Yes? Sorry. You said Rust checks array lengths at compile time. Yeah. Uh, can you go into that a bit? For example, so the question is. Uh, I will take this one. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is uh, how does Rust uh, check uh, the length of uh, arrays at compile time? Uh, it's, um, slice, it's uh, basically an array in Rust is a slice. So in the, the type, you have uh, the pointer uh, where it starts, and you have its length uh, in the same point. It's what we call uh, a fat pointer. Fat pointer. So when you, uh, we give it uh, to a function, we, uh, when we generate uh, the code, we, uh, we, we just know the size of uh, the slice. You can't uh, cheat. Uh, you, when you create a slice, you know its size. You can't, uh, it's constant. So when you pass it to a function, Obviously, you know its size, and we can give it uh, to uh, the, the GTK function. Is it good? OK. Other question? Yes? Uh, so the question is, uh, do I uh, intend uh, in GIO to uh, install, to uh, to use uh, Tokyo for async, that's it? To use futures. Futu uh, yeah, futures. So uh, I don't really know. For instance, uh, with uh, Anthony, we uh, talk uh, a lot about uh, how to, uh, to do uh, asynchronous uh, stuff. Um, and yeah, I think you will be the best to answer this one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so uh, in the Hackfest we had, I uh, implemented the code generator, the uh, uh, stuff to generate the asynchronous method and for now it's just uh, working with callbacks. So for now there's uh, no support for futures that, but that may be added in the future. No pun intended. <laughs> we have one more question. Yep. Uh, I wrote a binding for a library like gdp library uh, in the access. Um, uh, I found that process a bit tedious, like it took me a few days to, to get it working. Um, is there any plan to like make it easy to add like bindings to the existing library? So I repeat the question. Uh, the question is uh, for uh, the gear uh, generator for now. Uh, he asked if uh, we intend to make it uh, simpler because yeah, I didn't talk about that, so I will uh, go into details a bit. Uh, the gear uh, generator uh, first uh, generate a uh, uh, low level uh, API which isn't uh, supposed to be used directly by the users. And then uh, from this, it's, it just uh, writes the functions uh, from, uh, and all the times uh, the types from the libraries. And from this, you can, uh, how to say, we uh, have another level which is used uh, directly, and it provides uh, the API which calls uh, the functions uh, bound by the low level, if, if it's, uh, that's clear. Yeah. So uh, at this point, yeah, it's a bit complicated if you don't know how gear works. Well, even if you know it's a bit, uh, so we intend uh, in the few more weeks uh, to make something better. But it's more like when we have uh, a new, someone new 
starting a new library using GIDIR, we take uh, what uh, it says is missing. So that's why we wrote uh, this uh, huge readme file. And uh, then uh, we uh, add uh, new elements, uh, and maybe uh, someday I will write uh, a guide or something uh, in order to avoid, uh, to just allow more people to have uh, their own libraries if they want. Yeah.